Contoh 5 tahun, 6 tahun doktor. Anak saya ni baru 6 tahun kenapa ada breast. Hmm. Okay. So datang awal tak apa. Yang teruk tu bila dia datang lambat. So contoh umur 9 tahun dah start period. 9 tahun. <coughs> yeah, that's early. Yes, yeah. that's too early. Period should not come anywhere before 10. After the age of 10, even 10 years old dah standard 4 tu pun consider early. UM Specialist Centre isn't your typical hospital. It's Malaysia's premier quaternary hospital where rare, complex and next level care comes to life. This is Quaternary Care where our team of trusted super consultants are here to take on your toughest health battles using advanced technology and research-backed treatments all under one roof. Now, back to Nadia Azmi for UMSC's Curated Podcast. Hi everyone, welcome back to Q Rated, uh, brought to you by UM Specialist Center or UMSC. I'm your host Nadia Azmi, and we're back for part two of Sugar Rush or Red Flag when sweet turns serious in kids. Wow, much um suspense thriller movie. I'm here joined again by Associate Professor Dr. Azrianti Anwar Zaini, consultant, pediatric endocrinologist of UMSC. Ah, mm. uh, kalau bukan endocrinologist, endocriminologist, hey. boleh. <laughs> No, 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 no. Okay. Okay, before we start with the questions, uh, okay. Prof, uh. Uh, a little bit of statistics. I say nak sebut di sini. In Malaysia, mm. pediatric endocrinology clinics, especially in major urban hospitals, are seeing a steady increase in referrals mm. for both early and delayed puberty. Okay. Puberty dalam bahasa Melayu, uh, uh, Prof. Akil balik. Akil balik, uh. yes. So, data actually suggests that early puberty may affect about 1 in 5,000 to 1 in 10,000 children. Okay, that's early puberty. Uh, mencapai akhir balik dengan lebih awal Correct. daripada yang selalunya. Yeah. While delayed puberty, ni lambat akhir balik, impacts around 2 to 3% of adolescents. Hmm. Okay, so let's find out what is the problem. Okay. Prof, okay. Yes. So, kita nak uh, zoom in into puberty lah okay. kali ni. Yes. Okay, let's say a child shows signs of hormonal imbalance okay. uh, or diabetes. Hormonal imbalance tu macam mana? Banyak first of all? sebenarnya. Hormonal ah. imbalance tak semestinya diabetes. There's a lot of other things as well. Okay, hmm. okay. okay. Tapi in regards to puberty ni kan? Betul. Okay. Uh, we want to know what their care journey uh, okay. will typically look like. Okay. Um, you know, who's involved, what kind of healthcare mm. professionals will mm. be part of it. Okay. Um, tetapi before that, maybe doktor boleh uh, elaborate Just sedikit lah. Okay. The hormonal imbalance. Kalau kita hormonal imbalance, selalunya lah kita akan uh, refer to, you know, women when they're in their menses. <laughs> premenopausal. <laughs> Or her premenopausal <laughs> um, phase. phase. Uh, masa itulah hormon tak balance yes. lah and yes. all that. Mm. But actually kids also suffer from this yes. as well. That's right. So, uh, those are psychological. <laughs> psychological. Okay, that's another topic for another day. Another day. Uh, but in children, orang punya hormonal imbalance is very organic. Hmm. Maksudnya memang ada masalah betul. Okay. Alright. So, if I were to uh, quote that the whatever figure that you 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 mentioned to me just now, uh, if I were to have 10 patients, kan? Uh, 8 out of that 10 will come to complain to me that their children have early onset puberty. Delayed puberty ni jarang sikit lah jumpa. Okay. Uh, occasionally ada datang because delayed puberty tu dia orang biasa tak adalah merisau sekali. Maksudnya they, they, they wait a little bit more. Okay. But the early puberties are the one that datang banyak sangat Umur datang. Umur berapa tu Prof? So meaning that if they start for girls, they start their breast development mm-hmm. before the onset of 8 years old. Mm. Okay, for boys, boys ni kalau early puberty ni selalunya kena rule out very sinister things like brain tumors. Because boys don't usually come with early puberty. Okay, ada. Tapi tak banyak lah kalau ada 10 yang datang dengan masalah awal akhir balik ni, 8, 9 perempuan. 1, 2 tu je lelaki. Okay, so kalau lelaki tu datang akhir balik terlalu awal, maksudnya perubahan suara. Perubahan suara actually is quite late tau in boys. Uh, sebab biasanya boys kita tak nampak because the puberty changes in boys starts with their testicular uh, development. Okay. okay, which obviously parents kita tak adalah nak check anak kita punya bahagian uh, sensitive kan. But for girls it's easy to see because of their breast development. Okay. So they will come in to see me, um, uh, contoh 5 tahun, 6 tahun doktor. Anak saya ni baru 6 tahun kenapa ada breast. Mm. Okay. So datang awal tak apa. Yang teruk tu bila dia datang lambat. So contoh umur 9 tahun dah start period. 9 tahun. <coughs> yeah, that's early. Yes, yeah. that's too early. Period should not come anywhere before 10. After the age of 10, even 10 years old dah standard 4 tu pun consider early. 
kan kita in general kita dapat period girls dapat period <coughs> uh, umur 11 12 tahun okay yeah. so that is normal so early if it's less than 10 years old period before 10 years old or breast early before 8 years old okay so okay tak apa <coughs> minum dulu betul lah cakap sangat <laughs> okay sambung okay prof itu harm, <coughs> hormonal imbalance you yeah. know the the symptoms yeah. what parents should look out mm. for yeah. the changes that happens in their in the physical condition of their kids also what is the care journey that is involved that will happen that needs to happen for these kind of kids <laughs> or, or for these kids that are going through this okay so these children when they come and see me gantung lah kalau dia datang early tu bagus yeah. we can do something about it okay meaning that these children will need <coughs> number one blood test X-rays, ultrasounds, some of them will need MRI of the brain. Mm-hmm. Some, not mm-hmm. all, yeah. But the ones yang datang lambat ni kan, ah, you, let me tell you a bit of story, kan? You boleh, boleh. Story, okay. story time, boleh. <laughs> story time. I've got um, the one yang paling heartbroken lah to me. Eh? I've got a, a 15-year-old boy who was a twin. Okay. And they were both one boy, one girl lah, but the boy is the one that's affected most. They are born early. Okay, so they are the risiko dekat situ. Born early, uh, premature babies. Right. And... Nobody, because they're premature, nobody realizes that they are at risk. That too. And then suddenly they grow very well. So everybody, wow, fantastic, you grow very well. And then suddenly stop growing. Sebab dia datang akhir balik tu way before ahead of time. Okay? okay, before their actual time. So by the time dia 15 tahun, dia actually dia dah berubah akhir balik for a boy, berubah akhir balik umur 10-11 tahun, dia dah complete. So when he comes and see me at 15 He's not growing, of course, and he's only 144 at that time. You mean and when the akibalik hit, hits, or uh, no, they complete, stop growing or complete? Completes, okay. They stop growing. For boys, by the time they change voice, okay, it would have the end of their pubertal punya face. So they won't grow any taller. Yes. Really? So hmm. okay. And girls, color period. Once you start period, your chances of growing is very very low already. You only have like between 2 to 5, kalau ikut scientific calculation, 5 cm lah. Ini Caucasian eh. Tapi kalau children, Malaysian children especially, what I can see after period, you can only grow about 3, 4 cm. Hmm. So hmm. kalau you for 144, you datang period, means you probably not going to reach 150. And our Malaysian woman is 157. Kita nak child children, our girls especially, be as normal as possible. We don't want them to be extra short, of course lah. Uh, gitu. Okay. <laughs> Tadi uh, uh, the, the healthcare journey dah uh, cover lah kan? Yeah, eh? so they they will need their blood testing, yeah. they will need their investigations, and of course if they are too early, we need to start treatment. Okay. Banyak parents yang, nah tak apalah, nanti you tanya lah. Maybe you can ask later. I, I let you ask first lah before <laughs> sampai macam dah melompat. Kalau lah. ikut script ni, the next one is genetics. Tapi kita okay. dah cover tadi kan? Ah, dah, dah. Uh, genetics whether um, children, <coughs> kalau they have parents with diabetes or obesity, <coughs> Will they face the same race? Tadi kita dah cover yes, kan, cover. Uh, Prof? So the next one, okay. Mm. Okay, uh, Prof. Mm. Parents mm. who uh, want to prevent okay. their offspring or the the next generation mm. from um, suffering from either diabetes or obesity, whether these parents themselves ada penyakit itu atau tidak, mm-hmm. what can they do? Okay. Um, so kita berbalik pada obesity dengan diabetes. Uh, so general rule, general advice jaga makan, jaga tidur children lah ni ya, bukan adults <laughs> eh adults pun kena jaga tidur sebenarnya, you tak cukup tidur memang you makan tak boleh bawa bincang mm. you know that right? Makan pun tak tentu masa ah, exactly. and that's not good as that's well good. Yeah. so let's go back to children, okay makan bagus, tidur bagus, exercise bagus, let them be active, not on the phone all the time, yeah, or not on their gadgets all the time uh, enjoy proper, normal, healthy lifestyle, I think that's the most important thing, you prevent by doing so Okay. Change and that risk factors. Prof, there's also a concern about the things that are around us in our mm. environment and the impact, the influence that it, that it has on our uh, children's well-being. Mm. For example, mm. uh, Prof, processed foods, oh, yes. perfumes, plastic containers, scented candles, mm. even maybe essential oils. Yeah. Mm. We don't know that these things could be harmful, could be detrimental to the health, not just kids sebenarnya, tetapi to the society and as a whole. Mm. So can these elements, these factors really influence um, hormone levels in children and possibly trigger the early or delayed puberty that we were talking yes. about? Earlier on, okay? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we have... Okay. Macam mana cakap? Let's, let's put it this way. 
I cannot do a study. You dapat lavender oil, you dapat tea tree oil, you dapat bergamot oil. Mm. It is completely against ethical medical okay. ethical rule to do that in children. Okay, mana boleh buat macam tu? It's, right. it's wrong, kan? So by case report, so we listen to case reports, we listen to, you know, um, whatever people have said that, of course, there are certain types of essential oil can trigger a little bit of issues in hormonal imbalance in children. I'm not saying you tak boleh guna, but you have to use it modestly, moderately. For you and I, we can use those type, certain types of um, uh, oils yang ada a lot of phytoestrogens. So phytoestrogen is plant estrogen. So if you're using it in children, you tend to stimulate that uh, uh, estrogen-like effect. Okay. So the brain says, eh, eh, I think you kena masuk akhir balik lah ni. So, dia ingat because kita, dia salah. I faham. see. But if you are using it moderately, that's not a problem at all. Okay. okay? okay. Um, you you and I nak guna sebelum tidur ke apa, that's fine. But I've got cases. This is true cases yang kita sendiri tengok dekat klinik ya. Ni bukan case report daripada orang ni, kita sendiri tengok. I've got cases yang Daripada baby, guna oil tu masa nak tidur, masa mandi, masa basuh alas bantal dia. You know, they like, of course, kita suka bau-bau wangian ni kan. But when you're using it a little bit that too much, yes, it does have some effect on the child. This may come as a shock to some people mm, who are yes, watching. So, but some of us are, yes, we are very into all these. Yes, yes. Peoples. I'm into it as well. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with nothing it. Nothing wrong with it. But again, moderate use moderate. these things at a moderate yes. level. All right. I think in everything we do, we want to eat. Betul. Uh, when we want to have fun. Correct. You know, you do it moderately. Kan? I've actually done a, 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 a simple, bukan podcast lah, a simple uh, Q&A session with uh, parents, a lot of parents. Mm-hmm. that's asking about this kan pasal essential oil so I told them they, this was during COVID time so yeah. I bagi tahu diorang kata it's not that I'm saying you cannot use you can use please by all means whatever that you believe that can help to benefit your child but use it moderately to suggest but apart from essential oils mm. uh, bro, there's so many other things other things like around plastic us. exactly big, and it's so difficult so to more. avoid using these things so what can we do uh, as parents or you know caregivers the best guardians thing. avoid as much as possible and use uh, you know something very safe Contoh, <laughs> kurangkan penggunaan plastik. We are going towards environmental healthy nation. Yeah. So kita dah, you know, dekat tempat office you pun dah cakap jangan pakai plastik, jangan pakai polystyrene, kan? We are moving towards that. That is good. And I think we should just continue supporting using less plastics as much as possible. So, of course, it's more convenient to be using those things. But I think kita kena fikir juga lah. Uh, you know, the time has come to think yeah. about the generations to come. Yes. Mungkin kita sekarang tak akan merasai yeah. the, the We might impact, not be here. the negative impacts. Yes, that's right. Right. But then it's for our children, our spring, our children. Cucu, 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 dan dan seterusnya. All right. All right. Now, uh, Prof, we've seen how technology has revolutionized diabetes care for mm. adults. Yes. Tadi kita ada sebut tentang CGMs, yes. smart so insulin, insulin pens, pump. insulin pumps. Mm. Um, and then for kids, these are also made available for them as well, yeah. right? Yep. And um, UMSC does offer access to this level of advanced care for children as well. From your take, mm. uh, Prof, mm. you did mention that about the, the camps, yes. the diabetes, what do you call it? Diabetes camps that, that you uh, provide. Mm. It, it's, a, it's a platform where all these kids gather, yes. they, they come together, they mm. speak with each other, they do activities together. Yes, yes. And, and, and they talk about, you know, what they're going through. Yep. So this, I think, plays a big role in helping them shape their mental health, mental well-being, and also the mental strength in Confidence going level. through life's uh, challenges. Yes, that's right. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So how have you seen, um, you know, your, your camps uh, b- giving you positive outcomes? How have uh, children thrived mm-hmm. um, from going to your camps? Yes. Oh, well, we've got lots of children going through camps. I think Hmm. To be honest, I my father is endocrinologist. Okay, so he's the pioneers of endocrinologists when he uh, uh, he is still around, of course. Alhamdulillah, and uh, he started diabetes camp way back in 1980s. And I, being an adolescent during that time, I enjoyed following my dad. So I've known about diabetes camp right from when I was 17, 16. So I joined diabetes camp in the last in the in the olden days. Yeah, it's 
different now because I'm doing it now. <laughs> That's one. Number two, kita ada lebih ramai pesakit type one diabetes. Okay. okay. And uh, we are having fun with them. And, and what does a typical day look like for diabetes camp? Yeah. Okay. Bangun pagi, exercise, check gula. You know, we check gula for them. Like check gula ramai ramai. Ramai ramai check gula. <laughs> okay. Check check sugar berapa? Sugar berapa? Ah, kenapa kau punya low? Kenapa kau punya tinggi? You know that kind of thing. And then makan sama sama. When they eat together, they learn how to calculate their carbohydrate. Ah, ini yang Patutnya orang dewasa pun kena belajar. Hmm. Kalau let's say dia makan roti canai, it's actually equivalent to three carbo portion. Maksudnya tiga sendok nasi. Eh. Oh. Menangis eh. Oh. Siapa yang dengar? <laughs> ya yeah, satu keping roti canai tiga kabur nasi ya eh? oh, tiga sedut nasi dengar tu ha. so they have to inject a little bit more according to what they eat mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. so they they enjoyed so much I enjoyed tiga hari tiga malam tiga hari dua malam we will all out memang pengsan-pengsan <laughs> but we had um fantastic um Fantastic experience along the way. Tapi Puan, so, saya nak tanya juga lah uh, the acceptance level of Malaysians yeah. in particular. Kalau kita selalu sebut camp-camp untuk our children or field trips, selalunya it's all about having fun. Yeah. Um, you know, going on trips to different places, outdoor yeah. places, and, and exploring mm. the outdoors. Tetapi kali ini, it's, you know, there's it's a educational. strong message, educational. Yes. And it's about a disease. Yes, it can be dark. Um, but, but, but there's a brighter yes, side to brighter it. Side to it. But, but have the, you know, masyarakat boleh uh, menerima ke? Yes. Dengan kewujudan this kind of camp-camp, yes. do they allow their kids? Are they open Very to sending much. their kids? Yes. Because they felt that, you know, their kids needed that exposure, needed that independence. Yeah. So, majority, tapi yang best itu, sometimes the same children that goes again and again every year because okay, they yeah. love it so much. Yeah. They meet new friends. Uh, they are, they tend to stick together. So, I've got a group of children who are now 20s, eh, in the 20s. So, they're young adults. And they, oh my goodness, they click like nobody's business. They do TikToks, they do videos. Eh, hey, tengok hari ni aku makan koi saw. This is tiga exchange. They are our influencers yes, yeah, for influences. the betterment of uh, health. Yeah, yes, they are right. what, what I call them my warriors. Yes. yes. Hopefully, they will be the one that voices out to the government stakeholders. You see, yes. Please look at us. Yeah. Please help us. That is just brilliant Thank what you are doing, and you. you know something that you inherited from your father yes. as well. Thank you for that. Thank for you for bringing light and love to all these kids because all kids we deserve yes. this. this Every child deserves equal uh, treatment uh, in whatever they want in their lives. So thank you so much for that. Thank, thank you, you, Associate Professor Dr. Azrianti Anwar Zaini, Consultant, Pediatric, Endocrinologist of UMSC. So that was very eye-opening from birthday sugar highs to wearable glucose tech. We've covered quite a journey. Now to all our listeners, I'm sure you have found this very insightful. So don't forget to curate us by subscribing following, sharing, and commenting. So till then, we'll see you in the next episode with more exciting topics. Thank you, everyone. Take care and stay healthy. Did you enjoy today's Curated episode? Well, don't forget to tune in for the next episode of Curated Podcast by UMSC. To learn more about our consultants, specialties, or to book an appointment, visit umsc.my. For health tips, behind-the-scenes content, and expert insights, follow UMSC on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Till next time!